I like to think about studying economic failures in more therapeutic terms. You know, doctors and hospitals, they run frequently what's called M&M rounds, morbidity and mortality rounds. And they go and they study bad outcomes. I won't say mistakes because we all know doctors don't make mistakes, but they study bad outcomes in hopes of revising their procedures so that in the future, procedures work better. Another therapeutic analogy I might use would be with pathology, which uh, the branch of medicine that conducts autopsies and, and studies what caused people to die. And the motto of that branch of medicine is called, is the living learn from the dead. And so that's another therapeutic analogy. Another profession that spends a lot of time looking back and trying to assess bad and good past performance is the military. And if you go back and look at the military histories of World War II, the British and American, they run to thousands of pages covering just about every aspect of the war and things that went right and things that went wrong. And so in thinking about writing this book, it occurred to me, well, why don't economists do this? True that in medicine and in the military, when people make mistakes, lives are lost. So the fact that lives are on the line ends up is a powerful motivator for this kind of analysis. But it seems to me that in economics, even though it's not as likely to lead to people dying, it can lead to a fair bit of misery. And so that's why I think it's important that we study economic disasters.